Hi everybody, I'm Joe Parker of the Pixel Depot. So a few weeks ago, I had headed to the dollar store to see what kind of bargains and nice tools and goodies that I could find for the layout, and I found so many things that I couldn't fit them all in one video. So in this video, we're going to talk about the rest of the things that I found on that trip. So here we go. This video is brought to you in part by my patrons on Patreon. Follow the link in the description below to join the Pixel Depot's Patreon community and get exclusive patron-only benefits and goodies. I use car cards and waybills for my operations, and I also use train cards to keep track of the different jobs that happen to go on during a particular operating session. I've been struggling to find a way to keep those train cards organized during an operating session. I want to be able to keep track of what trains still need to be run, which ones are in process, and which ones have been finished. So when I went to the dollar store this time, I was pleased to find this organizational tray with three different slots in it. Now the width on these is a little much, but the height on them is exactly the right size for the cards that I happen to use. So I'm going to give this a try during our next operating session, see how it works out, and even if it doesn't work out, I'm sure I can find another use for this. Even if I can't find another use for it, I'm only out a dollar. Sometimes people don't think about the dollar store as a place to get arts and craft supplies, but they do have a pretty good array of different things there, including this package of five metal brushes. Now these brushes come in handy for a lot of different things. I would typically use these for applying white glue, especially during scenery applications. And this particular batch that I found has some nice bristles on there. Now I have another package that I got, I think from Amazon, where the bristles aren't quite as good. And when I used those uh, the last time for putting glue down on the grunge, when we were talking about scenery there, I wasn't that thrilled with them. This package here, I think the bristles will be much better for that purpose. Now you can use these for other things, including painting, but for painting purposes, I don't think you're going to get a very smooth finish on these. You're going to get a lot of brush marks. And so for me personally, I would tend to use these for scenery applications. But again, don't overlook the dollar store as a source for art supplies. There are all sorts of household goods that you can find at the dollar store, and I've used a number of them on my different videos here, including the small red cups, uh, as well as the paper cups that I've used for mixing various things. One of the things I found on my last trip were these glass containers. And the thing that I like about these is that they are small and that they have screw tops on them so that you can actually seal them up. These would come in handy for things like paint mixes and for washes. In fact, when I was doing the mortar wash for the building behind me. I really wish that I had something like this because it would have been a good size and I would have been able to put the cap on to prevent some of the evaporation that I saw. The fact that they're also a small size means that you can have a relatively small amount of mix and you're not wasting a larger bottle for something that's only going to cover a quarter of an inch or less of that particular bottle. So I think that these are going to come in handy for a lot of different things and at 20 cents a piece, pretty good deal. Now usually when I'm at the dollar store and I pick something up, it's because I have an idea of what I'm going to use it for at that point in time. In this particular case, I didn't do it that way. I found these glue dots there, and these are exactly what they sound like. They're small dots that have adhesive on both sides so that you can stick it down and then put something on top and it's going to stay put. Now I don't know what I would use these for on the layout, although some of the things that come to mind might be temporary positioning of buildings and making sure that they stay put. They might even work for permanent placement. I haven't tried them for that particular purpose. If I really put my mind to it, I'm sure I could come up with a number of different uses for these, but having them handy I think is gonna be something that will work out well for me in the future. If you have used glue dots in the past and have a good way to use them, please let me know in the comments below. Also falling in the category of things I bought without having a specific purpose in mind for it were these magnetic buttons. Now this particular package has 12 pieces in it. I also saw some that had 10 pieces and the magnets were different sizes. So you've got some variety there and maybe some different strengths for different purposes that you might be able to come up with. 
One of the things that I thought this could be useful for is car cards once again. So imagine for a minute you've got your car cards in a binder clip and you want to have places on the layout where people can put that package of car cards without actually putting it on the layout surface itself. You could probably use these magnets in various places to give people a place to put that binder clip while they are waiting or doing some other activity and keep those cards off of the layout. Once again, there's probably a bunch of different uses for these, so if you have any ideas that you'd like to share, include them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and want to click the like button, that would make me happy. If you click the subscribe button, that'll probably make me even a little happier than that. And if you want to click the bell so that you'll know when new content is available, that's probably some level of happy in between those two. I don't know how to rate it. I use Lego a lot when I am building structures. I use it for bracing, and I also use it a lot in corners to make sure that things keep perfectly square. I've talked about this in any number of videos. Now, I've gotten a lot of comments over time about the potential cost of using Lego in this manner, and I actually addressed this specifically in the video I did on my Smith Sign Company building. And one of the things that I mentioned there was that I've always talked about trying to find low-cost Lego sets at yard sales and so on. But this is another place where the dollar store can help you out. Now, while you're not likely to find name brand Lego at the dollar store, you probably will be able to find imitation Lego. Now, I've found these in a number of different sizes, shapes, and colors, so it gives you a little bit of flexibility on how you want to use these. I've found large flat pieces in packages of 8 and 10. I've also found the blocks in packages of 48. And one of the things that I found that was particularly interesting were these block tapes that have adhesive on the bottom and allows you to stick that to a surface and then build the Lego on top of that. These are all still perfectly square so that you can use them for bracing corners and so on and not have to worry about things not lining up correctly. And the fact that you get so many pieces for just a dollar means you don't have to worry so much about the cost of those pieces. Now, you're probably never going to convince me not to use Lego and you're probably never going to convince me that it is too expensive to use it. But if you fall in the camp of people that don't want to pay full price, then check out these substitutes at the dollar store. Now, I will say that the last time I went to the dollar store, everything was a dollar and a quarter. So maybe they need to rename the store. I don't know. Either way, it's still a pretty inexpensive way to stock up on various things that you can use on your layout. So that's all for today's video. Now I know from the comments of previous videos that a lot of you shop at the dollar store for finding supplies just like this. So if there's anything that you specifically seek out when you go to the dollar store, I'd love to hear about that in the comments below. The comments are also the places for other questions and suggestions. To check out my videos on craft store craftiness, click on the playlist button at the top left of your screen. You can also click down here for other great content. My name is Joe Parker of the Pixel Depot. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you'll meet me next time in the train room.